Perfect. Well, welcome everybody um, to our Education Abroad Week session um, for study abroad for wildlife and environment majors, or really any student at all who has, you know, particular interest in those prospective fields. Um, really excited to get started with this today. If you're not familiar with me, my name is Kendall Bancroft. I am an Education Abroad Advisor um, in the Education Abroad unit of our international programs office. Um, I'm also um, a student in our College of Natural Resources, so I have also a particular tie and interest um, to these fields today, so super excited to learn more myself. Um, as you can see, um, today we have a little bit of an agenda, so want to point out to you that we are doing a raffle and prizes throughout the week. So we have various prizes that were generously donated through our partners. Um, and we have a grand prize of a $1,000 study abroad scholarship. So the way that we will have you enter that drawing is by putting your email address in the chat. So go ahead and do that now. And you are also for every session that you attend is equal to an entry. So um, if you do the session today and another one tomorrow or throughout the week, it's all worth an additional um, entry. So definitely make sure you do that. Make sure your email address is valid and that it is your student email address. Um, also, so continuing down the agenda, um, we are super lucky to be joined today by Joel, Carlos, and Carlitos from USAC, who are all going to talk a little bit about their programs um, and what makes them so special. Um, and then um, we will, I will do a little intro on some programs and we'll continue there. We will have some time at the end for questions. So go ahead as we're going, if you have a question in your mind, um, typing that into the chat box. We'll try to keep an eye on that for the end. Um, and then at the end as well, for any questions that you might have, we'll have an opportunity for then um, as well. So let's go ahead and get started here. So just to um, start off by highlighting a couple programs um, that we have partnerships with. So the first one you'll see here is a program in Bhutan at Royal Timpu College. So this is a program right outside of Timpu in Bhutan. A lot of people aren't familiar maybe with the country of Bhutan, but it's a Buddhist Himalayan kingdom actually. And it is a, a country that is carbon negative. So they have a really interesting focus on conservation um, and there's sort of a balance with um, it's a country that traditionally did not allow outsiders in so it's a very unique experience for our students to be able to study here as you can see um, both of these pictures are actually from that campus so you can see the Himalayas it's beautiful it's green and there's a lot a lot of focus on um, tradition, but also, you know, innovation as far as the environment goes. Um, so students pay UI tuition room and board for this program. So it can be um, a little bit, you know, of cost effective for these um, programs. It also offers interesting internships. So internships with local um, NGOs, nonprofit organizations, government agencies, et cetera, that have strong environmental focus on those. Um, we actually had a few professors visit this campus. So if you're familiar with um, Dr. Lizette Waits visiting this campus during her studies, and there's a strong tie to the campus. So really interesting things um, for Bhutan. Another program is the University of Sunshine Coast located in Australia. So if you're interested perhaps in a country where the native language is English, this could be an option for you. So it's um, located about 60 miles north of uh, Brisbane. 
and it's a 10 minute drive from the beach. It offers um, a lot of access to state forests, um, really good location for that. Um, lots of internship opportunities for um, USC as well. And then lastly, um, we have a semester in Nepal program. So this is another very unique program for a country, you know, maybe that people are not um, as frequently visiting or studying abroad in and another Himalayan opportunity for tracking through the Himalayas. Um, studies offer anything from ecology to anthropology, philosophy, lots of things to study there, but another opportunity for you really to be located in a very ecologically um, unique um, space. Another program um, that we'll touch on here is our Ecolife program. So this is located in South Africa. This is a very unique program because it tends to be field based. So it's a lot of hands on opportunities. So for lots of those like wildlife majors or majors that you have to get internship um, credits and hours in, this could be a good opportunity for you to do that. Um, it is through the University of Pretoria um, and there are a lot of, um, like I said, field-based opportunities. So lots of trapping, um, hands-on field work that you can do as far as animal care. There's two different excursion types, which one is the wildlife conservation excursion and the other being vets in the wild. Um, so different focus on, you know, conservation versus the vet aspect of rehabilitation, animal medicine um, care, vaccinations, et cetera. We do have a session coming up tomorrow um, with Professor Van Hoven, who will talk a little bit more about this program if you're interested. Um, that is tomorrow at 10 a.m. You can look at our schedule um, at our website for more information on that. But um, South Africa, again, with this Ecolife program, they offer summer excursions, winter excursions, so different times to fit this interesting program in as well. And as for that, I will hand the baton over to our friends at USAC. Thanks, Kendall. And hi, everyone. Um, happy to be able to talk to you today about some of the uh, study abroad options you have through USAC. Uh, and as Kendall mentioned, we do have two of our resident directors here on the call with us. Uh, we have Carlos Salas. He is the resident director for the San Ramon Costa Rica program that we'll talk about a little bit later on. And then Carlitos Oviedo is also on the call and he is the resident director for the Heredia Costa Rica program. Uh, and we'll go into a little bit more in depth about those programs uh, a little bit later on in the slide. But to get started, um, if you go to the next slide here, Kendall, So I just want to kind of give you an idea of um, what studying abroad with USAC or what studying abroad in general might do for you. Um, I think for, uh, for someone who is in, like yourself, who's a wildlife or envi environmental science major, it might not be as obvious of a thing to do, uh, study abroad that is, but it's a really unique way to, I think, approach your, um, your academic career at Idaho uh, and help give you a lot of um, opportunities for your post-graduation plans. Um, studying abroad will definitely allow you to stay on track with your degree. We want to make sure that whenever you study abroad, whether it's for a summer or semester or short-term January program, that it's going to fit in with your academic career plan at Idaho. We don't want it to extend um, your stay. We want to make sure that you still can stay on track for your graduation plan. It allows you to build your resume in both a tangible and an intangible sense. Uh, tangible in the, in the sense that studying abroad will allow you to add any internships, volunteering, service learning opportunities that you might have done while you're studying abroad. Um, and then also, if you study abroad in a non-English speaking location, such as Costa Rica, uh, that will allow you to gain some language skills. And if you're able to say that you have Spanish, or French, Italian, um, Chinese, et cetera, language proficiency, that's going to look really great to some of your employers later on. Um, and then some of those intangible skills are, are more focused on cross-cultural skills that you'll, you'll develop 
uh, on any given USAC program, you might be the only Idaho student in your in your class. You might be the only student from um, uh, from the state itself as well. So it's a really unique classroom environment, and you'll have a lot of opportunities to network and meet other people um, outside of the the Idaho community that you normally would be experiencing if you were to stay on campus for for a semester or for a summer. Uh, and also giving you the opportunity to live abroad before you're tied down to a career. Um, this is one of the only opportunities that students will have to be able to actually spend a significant period of time abroad um, before you jump into um, whatever your post-graduation plans are. And one of the benefits is that, yes, you will be able to travel uh, after you graduate. Um, perhaps you'll have more money to do so, but you will certainly have less time. Um, you know, you'll be limited to your vacation availability. Um, and then also if you study abroad, it will allow you to use your financial aid and scholarships to help pay for the experience. So it's really kind of built in for you. So we certainly recommend taking advantage of it uh, uh, during your time as a student. And then looking a little bit more specifically at USAC uh, itself as an organization, um, we really strive to have uh, academically rich programs with wide ranging areas of study. Um, so you'll see that today we're, we're focusing on primarily just wildlife and environmental science majors, but we have a lot of different programs, a lot of different majors. So do know if you are looking for some other general courses that you need to take while you study abroad, um, you'll certainly be able to do so um, on any uh, USAC program. Uh, affordability and scholarships is huge for us as well. We are a nonprofit study abroad organization. So we really want to make sure that study abroad is something that is financially feasible for every student and that you are not limited just for financial reasons. Uh, we want to make sure that um, getting abroad, uh, which is a great thing to do no matter who you are, um, is something that we can help make happen. Um, as we'll go on later uh, on these slides, I will talk about some, uh, pardon me, some programs specifically, but please do know that we do have over 50 programs in 26 different countries. So you do have a lot of options out there, uh, depending on what you're looking at. Um, we've been an organization for nearly 40 years and we have a lot of support available uh, for you, both in the process that, that you're in right now with uh, different advisors, um, different marketing materials, different ways to get you prepared for a study abroad program. And then once you're on site as well, uh, as I mentioned, Carlos and Carlitos are resident directors. So they're both based in Costa Rica um, and they are there to, to help students have a successful stay uh, on any even program. And they also organize a lot of internships, volunteering, field trips, field trips excursions, uh, and much more to make sure you have a very well-rounded experience abroad. Uh, some of the tools I just very briefly want to mention, um, obviously a link to our website right there and we can send that or type it in the chat as well if you need to access it. Uh, we have some program search tools uh, to allow you to select your major or minor. Um, and then a lot of people available, as I said, to help uh, walk you through the process. So we'll touch a little bit more on that later on and we can answer any questions there as well. Looking at some of the program options, all of these countries are locations in which um, there are wildlife and environmental science courses available to you. So please, again, do know that there are a lot of locations. And then within these countries, Costa Rica as an example, there are multiple USAC locations. So um, I know there's, there's oftentimes a myth of studying abroad is kind of rigid. It's, it's hard to be able to find courses within your major. It's definitely not true. Um, as you can see, there's, there's quite a lot of options for you um, all across the world. And with that, I want to turn it over to Carlos Salas, who is the resident director for Salomon, and he's going to talk to you about the program here. Hi. Buenas tardes. Hola. Um, thank you, Joe. Thank you. Well, my, my name is Carlos Salas. Um, I'm the resident director of a uh, USAC in, in San Ramon. I have been working for USAC for uh, over uh, 20, 26 years. And one, one of the program that we have in San, in San Ramon is one of the three programs that we have in, in Costa Rica. And 
we offer uh, a, a program in, in the University of, Cost, of Costa Rica. So uh, uh, the university in Costa Rica uh, is, is the oldest university in the country. And the main campus is in San Jose. In San Ramon, there is, there is a, a, like a satellite uh, campus that has around 4,000 students. It's a, it's a beautiful campus uh, with a lot of green areas around. And we have, we have the, the, the programs, a uh, uh, year-long program. We have the fall, the spring, and summer programs. Um, we, have, we, we do uh, field trips. We have a, a field, field trips that um, are for the, for, uh, for the program. And also we have file trips, uh, well, I'll explain later. We have uh, file, uh, field trips that are connected to our ecology and biology courses. Um, San Ramon uh, is the location is, I will say that it, it, it is a great location. Um, we are very close, we are very close to uh, cloud forests and rainforests. And uh, the university has two, um, two uh, biological stations that we can, where we take our students. And also we have a, a private, uh, private, uh, private biological station where we can stay the students also um, uh, to do, to, for our field trips that I'm going to be explaining later and also for internships. Um, we do a lot of activities um, with, local, with, with local students. Um, we, 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 we play, uh, soccer is, is, is the national sport, so we do a lot of uh, activities where we play soccer with, with local students and, and we have movie nights. And, and also we have activities where uh, we find conversational partners for our USAC students with local, uh, we will connect with local students and our USAC students, um, will help them with the, with, with the uh, homeworks related with English and the local student will help them to improve the, the language skills. Uh, we had day field trips, uh, day field trips to San Jose, the capital city, that is our one, one hour from San Ramon. And we also have uh, day field trips to take, uh, to take our students to the beach, to the beaches and, and other, other uh, cloud forests and rainforests. It's important, uh, uh, Joe was telling you about before, about um, the, 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 the opportunities uh, to, to, to meet, uh, to meet local, local students, and also to, to improve the languages. Even though the, the focus in San Ramon is ecology and biology, and there are a lot of opportunities for the students to improve the language skills. They will, we also offer Spanish, Spanish uh, uh, classes. Um, and our students live with, with host families. We have a home stay uh, option that allow the students to, 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 to learn about the, 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 the culture and also to improve the language skills and to meet a lot of people through the, through the uh, host families. Kendall, next, next. L uh, one of the things uh, that we're focusing today is, is about uh, the biology and, and ecology courses that we offer in, 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 in San Ramon and then Carlitos will talk, uh, talk later about the options in, in, in Heredia. One of the other things is that most of our courses, most of our courses, there are three credit courses. And also we have a one credit, one credit attached to those courses for, for lab, uh, what we said, labs. I mean, we, we, take, we, take, we take students in field trips and uh, most of those classes, they have, like I said before, a three credit, uh, three credit, a three credit class, and there is one credit for field studies. And we take uh, students around to do a lot of hands-on activities. Um, and they, and 
there will be field trips related with the topics that are discussing in, in class. So for instance, if, we are, if a student is taking ecology and population biology, and then there will be two, three field trips, um, uh, and at least one overnight field trips when the students go, go and collect samples, do research related with the, with the topics discussed, discussed in class. Um, and we also, um, this, is, this is the list uh, of, of, uh, of the uh, courses related with, with a specific area, a specific uh, majors related with biology and ecology. You can see biology diversity, cell biology, Cell biology is, 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 a, is a new course that we are going to be offering for the first be a lab component. Um, the University of Costa Rica has a great laboratory uh, uh, on, on the area of cell biology. So the students taking that class will be also taking a one credit, uh, one credit class, uh, one credit lab. And um, you can see all the all the courses, ecology and population, natural, natural history of Mesoamerica, plants, taxonomy, tropical conservation, and tropical marine, marine biology. And uh, there, uh, usually a student coming to San Ramon in a semester will be taking between 15, 18 credit, credit hours. And usually will be um, 12, around 12, uh, 12 credits related with ecology and biology, and they give you space to take some courses related with cultural studies and Spanish language. So usually there will be a, 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 a typical students take around 12 credits on biology, uh, biology classes, and six credits related with either with language, with Spanish, and also with cultural studies. In the area of extracurricular activities, and we do we do internships and um, students can do internships and they go um, uh, they go very close to to san ramon uh, there are there are three three biological stations two biology biological stations that uh, are uh, managed or are controlled by the university of costa rica and there is one uh, one private uh, uh, biological station that allows students to do internships and also do, do research there. And they, they, students just want to do voluntary work. We have those options too. Okay, um, I'm going to pass it to Carlitos to talk about the area. And then at the end, I will be happy to answer any questions related with San Ramon. Hello. Hello, my name is Carlos Oviedo, but everybody call me Carlitos. I'm the resident director for Heredia. I've been working for USAC for 21 years. Um, I'm here to talk uh, to you a little bit about the program, or what we offer. Heredia, the Heredia program, we have an agreement with Universidad Nacional, which is the second biggest public university in Costa Rica. We're located in Heredia, which is like one of the provinces right next to the capital of San Jose. It's only six miles away from, from the city. Um, beautiful campus, very nice people, a great location because we are surrounded by different mountains. Um, the students always, always take advantage of that. They, it's very easy for them to take a bus from campus and to go for a little hike, for a little walk during the weekends or during the less raining season they go for nice work after classes. We offer uh, three programs, fall, spring, and, and summer. We don't have the winter session. <clears throat> In Heredia, we offer uh, more Spanish courses and less biology courses. However, still we offer uh, biology courses, but maybe not for biology majors. It's more for students who have a different type major but also they would like to take some biology courses, some chemistry classes, because they have a minor in that area. Uh, like Carlos was saying, we organize all kind of extracurricular activities for our students every week. 
we take them to very cultural activities. And beside the classes, we have the field trips, a day field trip, an overnight, and then an optional tour. The students are more than welcome to join. And we have the field study component, which is very important. The biology courses, the chemistry classes. Uh, maybe Kendra, you can pass the next slide. Uh, you see, you, you can see that the courses that we're offering in Heredia, each class have a field study component, which is an extra credit where the students go with the professors and do, do some research. They go like on the field and they go for one day or they go for the weekend. It depends on how many students we have. We organize two or three different trips with the professor. And this is very important because the students get to practice what they're learning in the class. It's, it's so hard to talk about biology or chemistry only in the classroom. Uh, we think that you, you need to go to the field and practice everything that you're learning. So <clears throat> again, the, the program is open for all the students and we are, we are more than welcome to have all the students. We just keep that in mind. You know, you have a, a Spanish a major. Yes, probably you would like to go to Heredia first or, or, or because we have more cultural, more uh, Spanish courses for you and less biology courses. That's the main difference between Heredia and San Ramon. If you need more biology courses, because that's your major, maybe San Ramon is the best option for you. You know, so just for you to, to, to think about that. Of course, if you have any question, we're more than welcome to help you, you know, with any question you might have. And again, at the Universidad Nacional, we have a, it's, it's a big campus. We have like 15,000 students. So there is a big biology school and a big uh, chemistry department where the students do their internship and their uh, volunteer activities. There is a greenhouse, there is a, a, a lot of research going on on campus. So if the students have like a good Spanish level, they're more than welcome to, to, to collaborate in the classes. Thank you. Thank you both. Um, I also want to highlight one more program that we have, and it's our program in Accra, Ghana. Uh, so Accra is the capital city and largest city of Ghana, which is located in Western Africa. Uh, this program, just like the two programs in uh, Heredia and San Ramon, are uh, offered during both semesters, fall and spring, and over the summer as well. And they also offer a lot of great um, extracurricular activities in the form of field trips, uh, excursions, different community and cultural events, things like that, uh, different buddy programs, uh, and then campus uh, activities as well, such as clubs and sports, uh, etc. Um, looking at the next slide here, more specifically, uh, the academics of the program are pretty wide ranging. Um, and, and one of the reasons that they're pretty wide ranging is that uh, students attending a semester program in Accra, Ghana would be taking classes with uh, any student at the University of Ghana. So you'd be taking classes with local Ghanaian students or other students enrolled at the university. Um, all of the classes that you are, are taking would be taught in English. Um, so you do have quite a wide uh, variety of different types of courses, but it might be more general as opposed to the the two programs we, we talked about in Costa Rica are very focused on, um, on those two locations. It's very strategic why we have those certain courses there, whereas for the uh, courses in Ghana, it might be a little bit more general. Um, if you do uh, have any trickier um, courses you need to take, or if you're looking for very, very specific courses, I would certainly recommend this as a good, um, as a good program option. Uh, especially because there are a lot of service learning opportunities. Uh, and I think all three of these programs, both of them in, in Costa Rica and this one in Accra, Ghana, um, I think there's, there's two things that are pretty unique about it is that they're, they're really strongly focused on um, uh, wildlife and, and um, environmental studies, but also they do offer a lot of additional uh, areas of focus. 
um, to really supplement your semester so that you're not just focusing on courses in your major or within this area of study. We want you to still take advantage of some of the maybe more uh, cultural courses or liberal arts uh, class majors at, uh, courses as well. Um, uh, looking at the next slide here, um, so we just focused on three of our programs that we have um, that are good options for, for students with your majors and looking for this area of study. But please know that there are a lot of options out there for you all across the world. Um, I specifically wanted to mention, uh, as I did it earlier, you'll see all of these programs um, listed at the top of this table and then you'll see some popular areas of study on the left side for all of the programs that are in non-english speaking countries so those that are in brazil costa rica germany uh, japan korea so on and so forth those programs uh, while they are in non-english speaking countries we do not have any language requirements for them so if you're very interested in, in san ramon or already at costa rica and you're you're excited about that program you think it'd be a good fit but don't have any spanish language experience that is totally fine you do not need to have any in order to be uh to join the program however obviously it would be beneficial for you to to maybe study it or if you're uh, thinking about maybe going um you know next fall or even the spring after spring 22 if you're able to take a language course to kind of get you prepared for that study abroad program we really recommend doing so, but please know that you do not need to have any prior knowledge of that language. Um, and for students that maybe you've taken uh, Spanish or Italian, et cetera, uh, for a number of um, semesters and for a number of years, you're also more than welcome to, to join the program. We have courses for students from, uh, with all different types of um, language background. So this is uh, kind of a quick uh, snapshot of where you can gather more information. Uh, obviously, our website's a great place to get info. Um, and we have this program finder, which is the, um, this bar on the bottom of the slide here, where you're able to select what you would like to study, where you'd like to study, and when you would like to study to filter all the programs that might be a good fit for you within USAC. Um, you can reach out to us, uh, you can email our program advisors, you can um, obviously we recommend talking to Kendall and Kate at, at Idaho because they can help you out through the study abroad process. Um, and then check out all of our, our social media, all of our blogs, uh, things like that. We've got a lot of great resources um, for you. Um, you know, obviously the, the website's a great place to get started uh, where you can find more information about the cost of the program, more specifics of the, the courses, et cetera. But um, definitely take advantage of the YouTube account, Instagram, um, some of our blogs, because there's a lot of great information in there, maybe presented in a different way. So um, with all of that, I think we'd maybe like to open it up for questions. Yeah, definitely. I'm going to take a look here in the chat, but otherwise, yeah, if you wanted to um, unmute yourself and ask any question to myself or Joel or Carlos or Carlitos, um, or go ahead and type it in the chat, um, we will go ahead and go over those now. I Carlos and Carlitos, um, well, while students are maybe thinking if they have any questions or not, do you want to talk a little bit more specifically about the internships um, and some of the more, more recent placements that you've had uh, over the past couple of years? Yes, sure. Yeah. It depends on where the students is really looking for you. Know, because sometimes we have students who come to the office and they say, I would like to do an internship, but they don't know what kind of internship they would like to do. Uh, when we get more information for the students, it's easier for us to play the student in, in, the, in the right place, you know, to do a right fit. In Heredia, again, uh, most of the internships, we do it on campus. You know, we do it at the chemistry department and the biology department, at the greenhouse. Um, there is a, a for, for internship, for volunteer activities, we have more volunteer staff 
because we go a lot to the national parks like Barba Volcano, Post Volcano and stuff like that. And we go with local students to help the rangers with different projects that they have. They can do that as a volunteer or also as an internship. In San Ramon is different and Carlos will explain more what they do uh, for the biology majors. Carlos? Uh, thank you, Carlos. Uh, yes, in, 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 San, in San Ramon, uh, we do the internships uh, connected with a connected with the uh, biological two bi biological station that belongs to the, the University of Costa Rica, and also to a private a private uh, uh, biological uh, uh, research station close to San Ramon. So most of the internships will be uh, connected with those places. Um, uh, students help with the researches that are going on there, and also we have a. a we have uh, students who have been conducting um, a research on on the the things that that they are studying and and they are they are interested. But like Alito said, it's important to have information before you come about the what are the things that you will be do, uh, uh, wanting to do uh, uh, or conduct your your internships. That way, when when you arrive uh, to to the site, we have we have more ideas about what will be the things that you will be want to conduct, and and also for you to take advantage of the opportunities that we have. We have uh, for for San Ramon, we have a kind of menu of the options related with with the internships, so you can look at like, you can look at that, and you can. Uh, through the central office, uh, you can uh, connect with with, with um, look at uh, look at the the option that we have in San Ramon. So when you arrive, you will be better prepared to to do the internships or the voluntary work. Thank you, Carlos and Carlito. So it looks like we had a question. Uh, so the question from the chat was, has the whole situation with COVID-19 put any restrictions on study abroad for the next semester or two? Um, from Mackenzie. And from the UI perspective, um, I would say <laughs> it's a, at this particular moment, it is a little bit of a wait and see kind of game. Um, there are a lot of things that are up in the air regarding the spring 21, which would be the next semester available for study abroad. I know all of us are hoping for things moving forward that of course everything's going to be right, likely different in some aspects. Um, there's probably going to be maybe a little bit of more restrictions, um, maybe on travel or different protocols, things like that um, at the rate that things are going, it is a little, we're hopeful that programs will be functioning in the spring and moving forward for the summer and towards the fall. Um, we are waiting for right now, right? University of Idaho does have a travel restriction on. So travel is not, um, is not permitted for students, staff, or faculty during the fall semester. So we are hoping that that will be lifted for spring semester. Um, I don't know, Joel, if you want to touch on you, the USAC perspective on that. Yeah, more, uh, more generally uh, focused just for USAC programs worldwide and, and Carlos and Carlitos, I'd be interested to hear more specific about Costa Rica. But as far as, as USAC approach is, um, also, the wait and see. Um, we we want to make sure that we're um, we're fully aware of what's going on and, and understanding what the the current situation for a lot of different locations is. Um, so, with that being said, we don't want to make it a decision too early. Should things rapidly change for the better, you know, starting um, with the spring semester, uh, spring twenty one. Um, so, understanding that that's a possibility, but also we want to make sure that we're we have, um, we're, we're exercising all, all caution that we can. We, we wouldn't run a program um, 
and this is related to COVID or, or re related to any health and safety issues, we wouldn't run a pro program if we didn't think it was going to be safe for students to, to successfully stay there. So, um, and, and also not to mention with visas, things like that, you know, we want to make sure that students are still able to get visas, et cetera. So, um, to more specifically answer, answer your question, study abroad is still happening as of today for spring 2021. Um, obviously, we're, we're, you know, it's more likely than not that we'll anticipate some program closures. Um, but we do, we do hope, um, and, and it does look somewhat promising to, that we'll have at least some students abroad um, starting in the spring. I would say if you are looking at um, programs this spring, there is still time. I think there was a question about uh, studying around next semester. Yes, there still is time, um, but just make sure you have backup plans as well. Uh, on our end, it's it's very easy for us to to transfer your application from spring to fall or or to summer or or what have you. Um, so we can we're happy to work with you if, if spring is not an option um, because of any number of reasons. We want to make sure that we're we're still able to get you abroad whenever it's. Um, whenever it's feasible. Um, and then also talk to, like Kendall was saying, talk to Kendall and Kay to make sure that um, even if you do have plans for studying around next semester, uh, see if you can enroll in courses at Idaho as well, just as a backup plan if, you're, if your uh, study abroad programs have to be postponed, et cetera. So just making sure that you um, uh, use all the resources available to you and then also understanding um, that backup plans are going to be, um, you know, very helpful for you. Um, Carlos or Carlitos, I don't know if you have anything to add about that, or maybe anything specific about about Costa Rica and how things are looking. Well, I will say that there still seems a lot of things on on the air. Uh, um, right now, since uh, uh, well, the uh, the air, the international flights were were, uh, were closed and they just opened in beginning of August. We are beginning we are beginning to get tourists they are coming and there are regulations there are regulations um, uh, of course they has to be if related with with COVID uh, I mean um, they have I mean you have to demonstrate that that you are not positive in, in order right now in order to fly to Costa Rica also, you need to have an insurance to cover you in case do you get sick while in, in with related with, with COVID while, while in Costa Rica. So they are they are the scenes right now. How how are they going to be in in, in January? We don't know. We don't know. Uh, I'm looking forward to 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 have to have a, to have a students. I'm hoping that that we we can get the students in the spring. However. We, we need to be responsible and make sure that uh, we will be able to take, I mean, to take good care of, of the students like always we do. I mean, uh, uh, right now, um, we, we, we have a, uh, a students en enrolled for the spring, few students, but we, we do have a students enrolled in, in the three programs, hoping, hoping that will be open, hoping to know how things are going to be developing in, in the next in the next months so um, that's that's uh, that's what I, I can say now Carlitos pretty much the same we're very positive um, hopefully we get to run the programs during spring so let's wait and see what happens uh, let's stay positive positive is the only thing that I can say for now I mean go ahead and roll and Hopefully we get to see you very soon in Costa Rica or in any program in USAC. That's it. Absolutely, and like I would just add on, just like Joel said, um, so for U of I, um, you know, we do recommend, there's, it, there's no, um, you know, negative to planning early. So whether that you're planning for next semester or, you know, fall or even the following spring 22, it's not, it's never too early to start planning. And on the UI side, it's relatively easy for us to right? if you're planning for spring, but there's another pop in cases or things get shut down. Um, you know, it's easy for us to work with you to then defer to fall or the following spring. So 
planning really is key and communication and just staying on the same page um, with our office, with the USAC office, whatever it might be, just making sure we're on the same page and um, just planning ahead for that. For the question I saw, yeah, for next semester, um, it's not um, too late to start the application process with that. With UI, you want to start our application. We do have an application in the UI side that you want to start with and then go over to the program. So USAC, whatever it might be after that. Um, and it can be done relatively, you know, quickly. Most deadlines are going to be um, you're going to start seeing them mid-October to beginning of November. So it is something you want to start working on. Application deadlines might vary a little bit depending on the programs that you're looking at. So it's definitely something that if you're looking to spring 21, you want to get started um, right now. But like I said, planning ahead is definitely going to be advantageous. So um, if you're even if you're looking at you know a year or two out now is still a good time to start looking at things and, and a quick note about the application process for the USAC side so once you you work with Kendall and work um, uh, through the the UI application process making sure you've got the green light to go ahead and, and continue to apply to a USAC program um, the application process on, on our end is a pretty quick one. You'll want to submit uh, an essay about why you'd like to study abroad, what you hope to get out of it, the experience. You'll send us your transcript and you'll have to um, complete a few forms as well, just making sure that you understand, you know, what, what study abroad is and, and agreements for um, uh, financial agreements, so on and so forth. And so um, realistically, you could, you could apply today and um, submit all of your application materials and be um, be accepted into a program, um, you know, within the next two three days. It's it's it can be a very quick process, just a matter of how quickly you turn things in. Um, and uh, I'd like to mention too that we accept students on a rolling basis. So um, whether you're looking at next semester or if you're looking, um, you know, fall 2021. Um, or even later, um, most of those applications are still open. So um, if, you've, if you're set on the program, you know which one you'd like to pursue, you already have the okay from, uh, from Kendall and the UI uh, study abroad office. Um, it's, it's definitely uh, in your best interest to apply just to make sure that you're ready to go. You'll have more information about the visa process, selecting housing, flights, cultural tips and tricks, things like that. Um, and then going back more specifically to the spring semester, we've waived our application fee, so you do not need to pay any money in order to be accepted into a USAC program just to submit the application. So obviously you'll need to pay for the program itself, but um, no money required up front for that. So hope that, hope that was uh, informative for you. Perfect. Any other questions? All right, just a reminder, also, if you haven't put your um, email address in the chat box to enter the uh, raffle, please do that now. Um, but I would just like to extend a big thank you again to Joel, Carlos, and Carlitos for joining us and for all of our attendees. Hope that this helped get some of maybe your questions answered, but we do know, of course, that you maybe are leaving with some new things to think about. And all of this program information is going to be attached to our website, which hopefully you've navigated before because you found your way here. Um, so probably found a link off our website, um, the Education Abroad website. We have our email there, abroad at uidaho.edu. Please feel free to send us an email as well at any point. Um, and you can find links to all of these programs and others there. Um, remember, we have multiple sessions happening throughout the rest of the week, some tomorrow, um, like I said, on EcoLife, funding, et cetera. So check those out as well. Um, but yeah, thank you again, and we'll hopefully see you soon. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, everyone. Yeah.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Stay safe. Thank you. Oh.